Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. What's up? We're back. Yeah, we're, we're back. This time we're back. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, yeah. I've had a I've had an interesting couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, so my I, I was joking that this is how this would end up beforehand, but um, and it kind of did. Uh, so I went to an allergist for the first time uh, last week. Yeah. Um, after I just like randomly broke out into hives, and it was really uncomfortable. I was like bathing in cortisone and it just wasn't enough <laughs> oh um, dude hives are no joke man i've been I, there it was like head to toe too it was terrible and um so uh, i went to my doctor and we had talked about doing the allergy test thing years ago because i i have so many allergy problems and uh or you know like allergy season's just kind of rough on me anyway yeah. and um and we decided no nah, no nah, you know i, I cope uh, so <laughs> You know, no big deal. But if I'm going to be like randomly breaking out into hives, then maybe it's time. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and that, so that's what we decided. Maybe it's time. So I went and did the allergy test for the first time. Um, and uh, well, I, OK, so the short version is I'm allergic to inside <laughs> and I'm allergic to outside. Uh, so I guess I'm just going to have to linger in doorways for the rest of my life. <laughs> that ain't good, man. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be something they can do about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have the uh, the injections, they yeah. do little injections, uh, like a, a bunch of injections over a couple of months, and it's supposed to stave off the allergy reaction. It's supposed to help you build up resistance to the allergens. And... Yeah. that's. I mean, that's kind of what my diagnosis would be, is maybe if you expose yourself to the stuff enough, you'll... Like develop an immunity to it? Yeah, you would think, but I uh, one of my allergies was cat hair, and I have two cats. <laughs> so, so this method ain't worked so far. Yeah, I mean, these two cats that have been here since 2011. Yeah, that sounds right? about right. So I've yeah. had these two cats for like nine years, and I'm still allergic apparently. <laughs> and before that, I had another cat for 13 years, and I lived in a house with five cats and three dogs for a couple of years <laughs> in there. Um, so mm. you would think my exposure, at least to that, would have been enough would, to... Yeah, you would have got developed an immunity at some point. Right? Yeah, but apparently not. Wow, what a shame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I, I said, well, the cats aren't going anywhere, so w what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? There's got to be another option. So here. it was either the injections or I take uh, antihistamines like every day for the rest of my life. Um, and... Uh, you know, I'm allergic to like almost every tree and grass that grows around here. Like yeah. pretty much all, but everything but pine. Yeah. I have like two pine trees in my yard and the rest is all things that I'm allergic to. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I'm not cutting all that down either. Cause we already don't have enough shade, obviously in this house or it wouldn't be so damn hot. Right. <laughs> um, and my AC wouldn't run all day long this uh, time of year. It yeah. is like, it rained all day today, so it's not so bad. But Today's it, <laughs> not so bad, but it's been rough this week, man. Yeah. There's been some hot days. Yeah, like hot 96 days. degrees day after day. So uh, for those of you that like that kind of weather, come to the coast. Yeah, <laughs> move to lower <laughs> Alabama. We got, got it in spades. <laughs> so um, I haven't kept up with news very much. Yeah. So tell me about the news. Um, I mean, the biggest thing um, is probably what's going on in Portland. Like that really is kind of absorbed at least a lot of what I've seen. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different stuff going on in the news. Um, a lot of stuff I don't really, I don't know. Portland was kind of the thing I felt like we needed to address more than anything. Okay. Just because it's... Well, what's going on in Portland? Well, <laughs> well, well the, the feds are um, going around and they're basically for the most part, I guess, protecting the federal buildings. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some dispute, which, I mean, they're fully within their right to do that. There's been a lot of reports, and it's really hard to get solid information, but there's been reports, at least, that they're actually taking people off the streets and just, like, without telling them who they are or anything like that, without showing any identification, just kind of grabbing folks and mm -hmm. throwing them in vans well, and okay. taking them. So I saw one video, and... Um and that's it. I saw one video of a guy getting picked up uh, off the street, and he offered no resistance and didn't seem remotely surprised. And um, they may not have 
said, you know, announced that they're police or whatever. Actually, yeah. I think that the federal units that they have out there are um, part of the well, immigration services. Yeah, because they are. I was going to say they're part of the immigration. And they, um, when I, the interview I saw where they were um, talking to, I guess it was a Homeland Security guy, mm-hmm. like a high level um, Homeland, said, claimed at least that they had insignia on their on their i mean they're in camouflage yeah exactly they're in fatigues yeah, yeah. like desert fatigues or something like that with flak yeah. jackets and stuff it's not like you're like <laughs> oh uh, that's some random guy yeah well you say that but like <laughs> living in south alabama like i yeah. see that running around here a lot <laughs> well i see them hiking around here yeah yeah well i mean I, i'm I, just talking about yeah. like coming in the store people coming in the full fatigues going out hunting and whatnot well, like i mean like that's a common sight where I live. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, you I do know, live maybe. in a different part of county than you do. So. I, I I see some people that are wearing um, like flak jackets, but they're usually yeah. in shorts and t-shirts, and they're just out staying in shape while they're yeah. you know before they get deployed again. Is <laughs> right, really what it is. I figure anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the guy said that they did have insignia on their on their uniforms and whatnot, and mm-hmm. that they were supposed to at least identify their self before they just like throw somebody into a van yeah. and whatnot. But it just part of the reason I kind of wanted to talk about it is it, it just gives this bad it gives me this bad feeling of like okay if this is if this is now what's going on what's next mm-hmm. and what's next and like how far is this going to go where you know your government is just like snatching people off the streets yeah well i don't think that that's anything new really it's not i mean it, it well but it seems more blatant i guess well it's because they're focused on it because it's federal troops so they can yeah. blame Trump. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's I think why that, it's getting oh, so much. That absolutely focus. is, and the and the lines are being drawn because Trump is definitely planning to run on a law and order um, a, initiative. Like that's mm-hmm. that's what that's that's the side that he's positioned himself for for this political fight. Yeah. Um, which is which, safe for a Republican. It is. Well, that's what I was fixing to say. He's not going to get a lot of pushback within his own party on that. Mm-hmm. Um, at least not as much as. I feel like he should. Yeah. But. Well, I, okay. So what's what I know of what's happening there is that they um, these protesters have been like actually not constantly, but actually assaulting a federal courthouse. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's in some ways it's like you know the Palestinians throwing rocks at the Israelis and getting shot at. Um, yeah. But you know they're like launching fireworks and throwing things and yeah i mean i don't think it's just just causing trouble in general yeah yeah um but you know the the feds did respond initially by setting up additional barriers between the street and the courthouse and the protesters ripped the barriers down um now you see that i'm all for i'm like i get protecting your property mm -hmm. and i mean that's basically what what you're saying the feds are trying to do is you know protect their property and i don't have a problem with that like i don't have a problem with that at all yeah well um well, what's the part that you have a problem with snatching people off the streets <laughs> well i mean what if they committed a crime because if they if they do damage to a federal building it is a federal crime and federal law enforcement is within yeah. its right to pick you up yeah, I mean, I and I I can sympathize with that too. And I did hear um, one of these spokespeople for the the feds saying that they're getting no support from local law enforcement to do this kind of thing, so they're having yeah. to do it themselves. Yeah, and that's that's kind of where I'm at with it is if and that's as far as like with Trump saying that he wants to send send the feds into some of these other cities to control the protests and stuff like that. To me, that's just more of the government at home needs to take care of that. So, if, Oh, I agree. If I were him, I would say, okay, well, you can't get control of your people. Yeah. You need to better figure it out or we'll just watch your city burn. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, that's that mm-hmm. goes back to one of our principles is the government that governs best governs at home. You yeah. Know? I mean, what, if, what about the government that doesn't actually govern at home? Well, that's... You know, to I mean, the the people will hold those the the citizens will hold those officials accountable for that, mm-hmm. and I think that's well, that's well, maybe they will, maybe <laughs> they won't. Maybe the city will just burn. Mm-hmm. But 
if you own property in one of those cities, I think you, and that's part of where the real problem is at. So if you own property in one of those cities, you need to be prepared to defend it. Mm -hmm. A big, another big issue we're having right now, though, is that law enforcement won't stop the protesters from burning your house down. Mm -hmm. But if you walk outside with guns ready to well, protect okay. your house, so they will arrest you for that. Yeah, um, let's uh, let's try to be conscientious on this podcast about the difference between protesters and rioters. Yeah. Um, I absolutely, so, uh, I don't have a, I have no, pro Oh, my chair just moved. <laughs> I have no problem with protesters, mm -hmm. with people who are just like protesting mm -hmm. black lives matter, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I do have a problem with people who are burning down buildings and things of that nature. Okay. Like causing property damage. And that's really yeah. where the line's at. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if you, if well, it does, does the federal government have a role in protecting people's property if the local government won't? <sighs> or doesn't? Or can't? Or can't, yeah. Um, I think at that point it's up to you. I think it's up to the, to the person that owns the property. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's... <sighs> it's a tough question. I mean, I don't... I'm not, like, married to that idea, but I just have a problem with the, gov with the federal government going into areas... Where the citizens aren't welcome, aren't welcoming them. Yeah, that's, well, um, that's my problem. Let's let's try and use this, these incidents or this incident, um, to talk about like what the proper role of government is. Yeah. Um, so, the <laughs> you say that if the uh, if the local officials aren't, you know, doing their responsibility in terms of protecting the rights of the people that. The, of their constituents, yeah. Um, that the people will remove them and replace them with somebody better. That's the um, idea, at least. Yeah. Uh, so we had some voting over here a couple of couple of weeks ago, right? Um, we had the primary, and uh, I, there is a big debate uh, in libertarian circles about whether you should vote or not, <laughs> like yeah. it, whether you should participate <laughs> in the system or not. Um, now I, I have. I didn't really have a, a, you know, a dog in this fight, so I didn't participate in the primary. Because, yeah. um, oh, I did. Frankly, I don't really care which of those. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't approve of anybody running probably on the Republican or Democrat ticket, at least not anybody that I knew of. And here's one of those things that I wanted to point out. Yeah. Like, I didn't have the time to research all these people and try and find somebody that I could get behind. Yeah. Um, so I abstained. Um, well, that's I fair. I think that the, the problem is that with voting is that, and I've said this for years and years, um, you remember when I was running for office, uh, two-thirds of the votes cast in the county were straight ticket votes. Yeah, that's um, a serious And for problem. those of you that don't understand in, in this state, and I don't think it's available in all states. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. Yeah. Um, but in it this isn't state, a lot, though. Um, you, ha you can check a box at the top of the ballot that says Republican or Democrat. Um, you can check one of these two boxes. Actually, when I was running, it also had Libertarian, um, <laughs> even though there were only a couple of Libertarians on the ballot. But there but, were some. But there were some. Yeah. Um, most of the time down here, it says either Republican or Democrat. Yeah. And if you circle in that box, you don't have to do anything else on the ballot. Uh, you turn in the ballot as is, and whichever box you circled, everybody that's available for that uh, under that party is your vote. Yeah. Um, they don't do that in primaries, obviously, because yeah. which is you know, part of the reason why it. primaries are so important. Because mm -hmm. if you're really wanting to, and let's just say you are a Republican, I'm not, mm -hmm. but if you were a Republican, that's the way you would change the Republican Party. It's through the primary process. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, is by by moving, and that's part of the reason I did vote in this primary because I wanted to vote against Sessions. Okay. Like Fair that enough. was like, and it just happened to be a football coach named Tommy Tupperveld that was running against him. So that's who I voted for. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I think uh, the the position that I always take on this is if everything you know about the candidate is on the ballot, yeah. you probably shouldn't vote. Yeah. Um, if you got a name and a party and that's all you know about the person, you probably shouldn't vote. And unfortunately, yeah. I think that most people vote anyway. Um, they do. In fact, we promote constantly that you, it doesn't matter what you know about the system. You got to get out and vote. Yeah. Um, get out and vote. Get out and vote. It, I mean, there are people that 
that advocate research beforehand, but that's not generally a part of it. They just want you to get out there and vote. Usually it's always, and it's always get out to vote and whatever the group is, is Mm -hmm. they know that they're marketing their get out to vote campaign towards people who are going to be sympathetic to, towards their cause. Yeah, I mean, it's usually like get out and vote and vote Democrat. Yeah, Or exactly. get out and vote and vote And Republican. they may not even explicitly say that, but you can tell by who they're marketing it towards. Well, often what they do say that. Well, they do. Um, um, and, and that's the point. Like the, the uninformed voter is, the, is one of the greatest threats to liberty in a, in a democracy. I agree. Um, and uh, and you're, the uninformed voter is also just like a godsend to these corrupt politicians. Um, you're just helping their cause really like, Oh yeah. Because you're continuing to put people in office that, that have histories that you should know about. And if you did, you probably wouldn't vote for them, but, but you don't, but nothing will make people educate themselves more as far as who they're voting for is when there's built buildings burning down and people on the streets, people tend to, at least and it's been my experience in the past month or so mm-hmm. is that more and more people aren't just like taking the party line they're educating themselves on what they're who they're voting for because they're of not what's, just taking the party line is that yeah what yeah mean? they're not yeah okay. um they're they're educating themselves on what's going on and and that may just be I mean that is anecdotal because it's just kind of what I've seen personally. Mm-hmm. But I know more and more people that I work with are taking not only taking an interest in this stuff, but questioning things that they thought were just kind of automatic. Yeah. As far as the parties are concerned. Okay. Well, um, that's good. I would love to see more of that. Um, yeah. You should like give them some of the books that I've given you that you haven't read. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they may read them. <laughs> um. Well, uh, the idea of this country, like the thing that that set the United States apart when it established itself, yeah. um, and it wasn't a new idea. It was just one that that I've at least there was some cursory attempt to actually enact um, was the idea of a government of consent. Yeah. Right. Um, now. Here's so th- this is where we get into like what is the proper role of government, um, and I think that it are the founding fathers were clear about that they thought that the purpose of government was to protect the natural rights of the people. Yeah. Um, and nothing which is, more. Which is what we would encourage. Yeah, protect yeah. the natural rights of the people, and you know the natural rights are the things that you can provide for yourself. By the way. Yeah. Um, you know, go back and listen to the rights when we put it out about a year ago. Um, actually, we we did it like two years before that too. But <laughs> we redid can, it again. Yeah, yeah, you can find it <laughs> at the the Liberty Mike um, from about a year ago, um, and it we titled it Liberty Mike Classic on Rights. Yeah. Um, but the the short version is um, that a anything that requires something from someone else is not a right. Yeah. Like, right. so healthcare is not a right. Yeah. yeah. Um, clean water is not a right. Yeah. Uh, you have the right to procure clean water, but you don't have the right to demand someone else provide it to you. Yeah. Um, and even things like the right to an attorney, uh, you know, we talked about it in terms of positive and negative rights, mostly in that program. Yeah. Um, but the right to the uh, uh, to an attorney is not the right to compel somebody to act as your attorney. <laughs> um, it, it is uh, it is that the government cannot prevent you from having an attorney. Yeah. Um, although that has yeah. been perverted over time that now they essentially compel yeah. um, people to act as your attorney and like that's what public yeah. defenders are and, right and, but, and yeah and we talked about before i think that that's not that's not who you want representing you yeah that's not <laughs> ideal yeah it's not ideal um but uh here's one of the the sticking points of a government of consent um realistically is that uh a government can only wield authority granted by the people if it's a government of consent. Yeah. And therefore, um, a government has no more authority than any individual. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, you can't, you can't um, delegate authority to uh, that you don't have to something else. Okay. So if I don't have the authority to say, take your money to provide security for you, yeah. Then the government doesn't either. 
there you go. Okay. <laughs> so taxation is theft. Taxation is theft. <laughs> um, now, <laughs> realistically speaking, in, in terms of uh, you know de facto um, government, uh, the Civil War essentially established that um, the the subject relationship of the people to the government. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Civil War. Uh, essentially established in the idea um, that a uh, government does not actually require your consent um, for you to be subject to it in yeah. this country. Yeah. Um, that uh, you can forcibly um, subject people to a government that they don't want, yeah. which is what happened to the South after the war. Yeah, because... Yeah, because the whole idea was was the South wanted to succeed, secede, right? And they weren't allowed to, right? <laughs> like we fought a war over it and lost, <laughs> exactly. Um, and while the you know one of the primary purposes of seceding for the South may have been to maintain slavery, yeah. um, ending slavery was not one of the primary purposes of the North. Uh, um, engaging in that war. Yeah. No, um, the reason they, they would have been more than happy to, uh, maintain slavery if they could have kept the union together yeah. by force and still maintain slavery. Wouldn't yeah. have bothered them one bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Not one bit. Yeah. Um, so it was really about making sure that the federal government had the authority over the whole of the, of the country. Exactly. Um, and, uh, so, he, you know, you run into with democracy, like the tyranny of the majority. Oh, and I, I will go back and say that, um, uh, Lysander Spooner, who's, uh, one of the writers that I really like, um, he, uh, he said specifically about the civil war, um, that, uh, because of the idea of the government, of, uh, of, Actually, I guess the tearing down of the idea of a government of consent um, to making it clear that it wasn't a government of con consent, no matter how they claimed that um, that by establishing the principle that a government can be subjected upon a people that does not want that government, um, that the number of slaves in this country was greatly increased rather than greatly diminished. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a good quote. <laughs> I like that. And because he uh, he says that uh, that the difference between um, chattel slavery and political slavery is a matter of degree, not of kind. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it still establishes the idea that a group of people can take your Run property. Over you. Yeah, yeah. Um, take your property without, uh, you know, demand things of you without you having the opportunity, essentially, to. to and and if you don't submit, yeah. then you're a traitor. Exactly. Or a criminal. Or a criminal. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, th an interesting side <laughs> side effect of the Civil War. Um, mm. And this, no, never mind. Um, so then, the, you know, this is one of the dangers of democracy, like I said, is that the uninformed voter is uh, kind of perpetuates um, the corruption of government. Yeah. And, and I think probably uh, makes it greater um, besides just perpetuating it, it. It enlarges the corruption of government. And the, the truth of the matter is the people will... Um, will try and push the government in the direction that is most advantageous to them. Yeah. Well, and that's where you end up in situations like kind of where we're at now, where one group of, of people are voting the rights or the property away from other groups. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say property, I mean in the form of like taxes and things like that. Right. You know, and that's, and they pretty openly do it. Like, I mean, it's, um, I mean, that's the big, mantra of the democrats is tax the rich tax the rich yeah like and that's literally one group wanting to take property away from another group yeah you know well and they, they also have the whole eat the rich thing which was oh um, yeah i'm not sure if they recognize where that comes from that it was a, a satire <laughs> by jonathan swift about um i'm not aware of the, this this is new to they, me he was trying to propose a a a, a fallacious response to um, issues of poverty. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're taking it the other way, but it, it was still 
a, a satire um, yeah. that he was saying, you know, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll eat the poor or eat the babies or, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I can't even remember exactly what it was, but um, yeah. what he was promoting. But it was like this absurd answer that, I mean, it would have solved the problem, but it was obviously terribly immoral. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not something <laughs> uh, you could stand behind. And yeah. So, but now we get this whole group of, uh, you know, neo-Marxists that are yelling out, eat the rich. Eat the rich. Um, no, I haven't. I mean, that's that's new to me. I hadn't heard the eat the rich thing. No, I've seen people with T-shirts and everything. Oh, it's really? Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, this is getting out of hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and back to Spooner, um, he, so, and this is it. Like, if, um, if an individual doesn't have the right, and we would take it as a, as an assumption of natural law of natural law that a person doesn't have the right to take away the natural rights of somebody else. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the, I, I guess the, uh, the purpose of, um, in, in some sense, and I don't advocate for this exactly, but I think that an argument could be made that the purpose of government is to, um, mediate at the margins essentially yeah. between people's natural rights where they butt up against each other. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, th- that seems fair. I don't think that a government is necessary yeah. really to, to do, do that, that yeah. but, um, but whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, but he said, uh, um, and I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, he said, two men have no more right to exercise authority over one than one to exercise the same authority over two. A uh, man's natural rights are his own against the whole world, and any infringement of them is equally a crime, whether committed by one man calling himself a robber or by millions calling themselves a government. Yeah. Right. And um, so this is where we kind of get into what, you know, what is the real purpose of government? And the real purpose of government is to ensure people's liberty. Yeah. Um, now, that has been twisted also over time uh, to mean liberty from want. <laughs> or, or something yeah. like that. And the, um, you know, the Declaration of Independence uh, talks about the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's yeah. the pursuit of happiness. It's not happiness. You're not guaranteed yeah. happiness. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, you're guaranteed that government will stay out of your way uh, in your attempt you... to try and find that on your own. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, who's to say what's good for one isn't good for for everyone. And yeah. that's kind of the, the problem that we run into here. Um, Heinlein said something along the lines of, uh, that any, uh, group cult or sect, um, will legislate its beliefs into law if given the political power to do so. Yeah. And, uh, and this is what we're kind of running into is that, that a majority of people or a powerful group of people or whatever it happens to be, some people that can, um, either through force of numbers or through force period, um, can, um, legislate or, uh, impose their idea of what life, how life should be lived on everybody else. Yeah, exactly. And that's a problem. Yes. (laughs) That's part of the reason democracy doesn't really work. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and you know it's, uh, it's this isn't actually an advocation for another form of government either. I mean, yeah. I, I believe in no rulers. Yeah. Um, that uh, you know that people can find their own answers. Um, and you know, in terms of the the security thing, uh, using the example of um, that, if I can't take your money. Uh, forcibly so that I can provide security to you then neither can the government. Yeah. Um, the idea is that if you feel like you need security, you're perfectly capable with your own money in your pocket yeah. um, to find Go and negotiate a way yeah. uh, to, to provide that for yourself. Absolutely. Um, either through others or yeah. by buying a gun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we kind of got off track here. I, I, bring us back to the, to the Portland thing and I'll, I'll try and pick it up from there. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much more I really have to say as far as Portland goes. It just seems like we're heading down a dangerous road with that. Um, but, but Trump is dug in, like he is all in as far as gonna, gonna put, you know, federal troops in these cities and in these places. Oh, I did think something though. I, I heard an interview with, a. a, county commissioner or something like that in Portland. Yeah. Um, who said, uh, who was talking about these, um, these protests and, um, 
said something along the lines of uh, talking about the feds that they see it as treason and we call it democracy. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and I think that fits into what, I, what I was just talking about is that, um, that voting, like voting gives you power. Yeah. Is the idea. Yeah. Um, and that's your voice. Yeah. And if you can't, <laughs> If you can't get your way by vote, this is what they're advocating, it seems yeah. to me, is that uh, you vote, and if you don't get your way by voting, then you can you have the right to use force, and you still call that democracy. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's just this justification for this weird, uh, you know, religious-type devotion to the idea of democracy. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that, like— while democracy has worked better than most options, yeah, um, in terms of providing liberty to the people, it certainly hasn't proved foolproof. <laughs> no, well, and in fact, fools are the real danger. <laughs> I, I think right. to democracy. Yeah, um, but uh, that that's you know the, this idea that if you can't get your way one way, then you get your way the other way, and you still call it the same thing. Like yeah. um, they were doing the same thing with the statues stuff in uh, the UK. Um, that, you know, one of these statues that they pulled down of like Rhodes or somebody, I can't remember. And I was listening to this interview, um, of this lady who's saying, well, we've been trying for years to get the city council to bring those, um, we, you know, we've been campaigning for years to get the city council to remove this statue and they never did. So <laughs> we took it down like that. That's the logical follow up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not the case at all. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, at least if you believe in the non-aggression principle. Well, that's just it, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is, uh, you know, back to the to the root. Uh, if um, you don't have the authority, if, if an individual isn't vested with the authority to do something, then they cannot grant that authority to a, a larger group. Yeah. Calling itself a government or whatever. Or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Let me see if I have any notes that'll tell me where to go from here, because <laughs> I kind of wandered off into, yeah. into nowhere. Um, wow. Well, I mean, we can we can talk about the racism thing some if you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's it's probably related in some ways to a lot of these. It's certainly related to these protests. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's yeah, that's kind of the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, like I say, the. I'm torn with, on the whole deal, especially like with, with the deal with Portland and even with Trump sending out the troops. I mean, I, I get why you can't have chaos and people out in the streets, but at the same time, it just it, it gives this bad feeling of like martial law, and especially when you've got the situation where you've already got people on lockdowns and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just feels like you're only a couple of steps removed from Trump using federal forces to keep you in your home and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I think that I, well, I mean, I, it, mean, it, I, it, I, I see your point there, but it seems to me that, that Trump has been advocating for the end of these lockdowns. Yes. It's been the local authorities that have, but if Trump loses, really tried election, to maintain it, the precedent's already been set for Biden well, to do yeah. the same thing because okay. Biden's on the other end. That's and, true. and, and that's that's what I worry about more than anything. And like I say, it may be an irrational worry. Like it, it may very well be because it's we're not there yet. But yeah. it just feels like like that just seems to be the beat of the drum that I feel that we're heading towards. You mm -hmm. know. Well, so, I mean, we're. I think that we're already in the police state. Yeah. Oh, we absolutely. There's no question about that. Um, we already live. It's just the progression of it. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think that the problem that you run into uh, with the, the Portland thing is that um, these are federal buildings. And while I don't approve of the federal government owning property, particularly, yeah. um, they are, you know, by my own standards, they have absolutely the right to defend their property yeah. by whatever means necessary. Yeah. Um, and I think that if you believe in the authority of the state, uh, yeah. then you have to um, ag agree with what's going on out there. Yeah. Um, that they, if you agree with the authority of the state, uh, or if you buy into the authority of the state, then the state absolutely has the right to defend its property and to, um, to uh, you know, Arrest imprison people, and yeah. yeah, people that violate 
yeah. that thing. Um, if you believe in law and order, you're in the same boat. Yeah. Um, now, if you believe in law and order, then then we probably have more in common than you realize. Yeah. Um, if you believe in the authority of the state, then we probably have less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the two aren't aren't mutually inclusive, uh, yeah. law and order and the authority of the state. Yeah. Um, you know, it just depends on how far you want to extend the idea of what is law. Yeah. Uh, I mean, legislation doesn't necessarily... I mean, so there's plenty of, of historical examples of legislation that is absolutely immoral, and there's plenty of it still going on today. Oh, yeah. Um, so... Uh, you know, just because a, a government says it's it's so or it's right doesn't mean that it is. And this is how we can segue into the you know racism thing is that there yeah. you know a Supreme Court in this country yeah. um, declared that uh, that people can be property. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, it was a long time ago, but it happened. But it and, happened, and, it just and it's shows, actually still on the books. It, it shows the whole because they don't ever they always stick to precedent. They don't ever actually overturn any of that stuff. They yeah. just add to it. Yeah. Um, well, it just shows kind of the holes in the system as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. That you know. Well, and there's you know the idea that this is a racist country or that it was founded on racism, I think, is fallacious anyway. Um, there was a real attempt to put an end to slavery in the Constitution, and yeah. there was a real attempt to put an end to slavery in the initial drafts of the Constitution that was like explicit. Yeah. Um, but they couldn't get the Southern states to sign on, and there was more of a danger of losing all the liberty of everybody if yeah. they couldn't come to some kind of compromise to work so, together as a group yeah. because these are, you know, 13 disparate young colonies yeah. um, that are trying to defend themselves against the greatest power in the world at the time. Oh yeah. Um, so there, you know, some compromises were made, but one of those compromises, um, well, okay. So let's talk about two of those compromises that are brought up. Uh, well, one of them is brought up all the time and one of them, everybody seems to have forgotten. Yeah. Um, one is that there is a moratorium, uh, set for 20 years after the ratification of the Constitution on on slave import. Yeah. Um, this was one of the attempts to end slavery. Yeah. Like, the idea was that if you can't bring any more slaves over here, that the practice will die out. Yeah. Just um, end itself on its own. Yeah. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, of course, there was a whole bunch of uh, both federal— well, there was a whole bunch of legislation that managed to— <laughs> to extend the life of the practice yeah. um, in this country. Uh, the other thing is the whole uh, three-fifths, um, that, uh, you know, the slaves counted as three-fifths of a person for the purposes of um, of representation yeah. um, in the government and the House of Representatives. Now, this is... Go this. They go on and on about this one is like, uh, you know, saying the black people are only worth three fifths of a person, et cetera. Um, the the purpose of that was to m ensure that the southern slave owning states yeah. didn't have a disproportionate amount of power at the federal level. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like the idea was to try and prevent the. I mean, if they had given full um, representation, full representation based on slavery as well, for people who weren't allowed to vote. <laughs> yeah. Um, then there's no way they could have ever brought an end to the practice ever. Like yeah. there's, yeah. you know, well, I say that, I mean, I think that the it was morality the catches out. up yeah. with people at some point. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the reason for that was to, to try and prevent the Southern slave owning states from having a disproportionate amount of power at the federal level. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think the, the whole idea of, well, and they talk about Jefferson and, and Washington being slave owners and so forth. Both these yeah. men lived in Virginia. There was a state statute in Virginia, um, that said that if you held debt, uh, that you couldn't release your slaves. Yeah. Um, cause they were essentially property that could be used to, to balance that debt if, you know, <laughs> if, if it, it came, came to, to it. it. Yeah. Um, so whether they wanted to or not, they were, they were bound. prevented from yeah. doing it by the, the laws of their state. Yeah. Um, and it's the same kind of thing in the South here, like the Jim Crow stuff. Yeah. Uh, the Jim Crow stuff was, was government legislation. Um, and I think that it was, it was legislated because it was the only way that they could maintain this real division. Yeah. Um, that if you left people to their own devices, that they tend to, uh, integrate. Yeah. Right. Um, because, uh, you know, at some point somebody says, well, 
I don't care, you know, who held that dollar. That dollar's worth just as much in my pocket anyway. Exactly. Um, and so the... It all goes back to economics at some point, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean this is how they were able to maintain the segregation is through uh, government legislation. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, now we have this whole idea of white privilege, uh, which you know, like a lot of it is that they're looking at divisions in this country and they're assigning, um, you know, ideas. Well, okay. So there's like the, uh, um, what are they called? Intersectionality thing. Uh, Right. Um, so, you know, they keep, and the way it's being used right now, it seems to me is that it's like this, um, this victimhood Ponzi scheme, thing where you just like try to accumulate as many victimhood points as you can. (laughs) And you know, that puts you at the top, um, or, you know, uh, victimhood Olympics or something. Um, but there are, uh, there are lots of other factors besides, um, race or ethnicity, uh, gender, um, uh, sexual orientation, like these things that the, that these groups that the social justice warrior groups have fixated themselves upon, um, that, uh, have an impact on where you end up in life. Yeah. And, and I would posit that the whole idea that you can, um, make a bunch of assumptions about a person based on any of those things is in itself, like incredibly prejudiced. It's horrible. Yeah. Like that's, that's not how any of this is supposed to work, (laughs) you know, but there's, I mean, there's lots of other factors, uh, education, uh, home life, um, wealth, I, I mean, certainly the economics is, is, is a factor in this stuff, um, that can be far more predictive, including like personality traits stuff, yeah. um, that can be far more predictive about where somebody's going to end up in life, yeah. um, than race, ethnicity, uh, gender, um, sexual orientation, like all these things that we're, that we're so focused on. Um, and when you talk about white privilege, like, I mean, to me, it just seems we were talking before the podcast got started um, about the the whole the thing that the um, National Museum of African American Heritage and Culture, it's a Smithsonian thing, they put out this little thing. They took it back down relatively <laughs> quickly. Quick. Yeah. Um, but it was you know these things that uh, show your white privilege, um, and it was a whole bunch of factors like uh, you know the idea that uh, if you work hard, you'll you can achieve your goals. And if you didn't get there, it's because you didn't work hard and that the nuclear family is the most important family unit, you know, uh, mother, father, kids. And like some of of these things were things that are like way older than, um, than Northern European culture. (laughs) Um, and, uh, and some of them, it was just like, well, what is the alternative that you well, that think? Well, was, that was the question I was asking you when we were, dis- when we were looking at it and discussing it. It was like, okay, like, if, if you want to believe that, that's one thing. But what's the opposite of this? Like, what's, yeah. yeah, what's the reverse of that? Like, I mean, if, And I'm if, not opposed to polyamory, but, <laughs> like, as long as it's consensual. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... The idea that this is okay, so this is what I think a lot of it comes down to. Um, so it's white privilege in this country, but what about in countries where whites aren't the majority? Yeah. Um, like, is there white privilege in Japan? <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> no. And uh, you have all <laughs> classes of people in Japan, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, Japanese are actually like historically very closed culture. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I imagine that there's a, a bit of a Japanese privilege in <laughs> Japan. I, like, essentially, you're talking about the privilege of the majority. Yeah. Right. And this is, you know, and these are the same people that think that democracy is the answer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, democratic socialism, but democracy <laughs> but, still. But it's still got democracy in it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and so I think that what you I think that these are competing ideas like. Yeah. Um, if you're opposed to the privilege of the majority, how can you also be on board with democracy? Yeah. (laughs) Because essentially what you're saying is whatever the majority chooses is what wins. Yeah. Well, it Uh, goes back to what you were saying earlier. Well, if we don't get our way at the ballot box, we'll just loot the streets until we get it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll use force to achieve our goals instead. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that there's never a time for that, but I don't think this is it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Not, Not just yet. Um, and this is the thing, like everybody faces challenges. Yeah. 
It doesn't matter what your race or gender, or sexual orientation, like everybody faces challenges. And I think that it, it is far from certain that any group for any of those kind of arbitrary reasons faces more or greater challenges than any of the other groups. Yeah. Um, I mean, it may be the case that, that one of those things does make you face more or greater challenges, yeah. but I, it's far from apparent. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that the, uh, that it, it starts, uh, well, okay. I think that the idea of, uh, of a special grievance, right? You, yeah. you understand what I mean by I that? Yeah. Um, I think the idea of a special grievance seems more of an impediment to, inv- to advancement than promotion of advancement. Yeah. Um, I think that it's, I think that it's very damaging to a person uh, to give them a whole bunch of outs, a whole bunch of excuses as to why things didn't work out for them. Yeah. Um, and I think that it, you know, I, I think that it's, it creates more challenges for a person to be able to, to, you know, put everything up to something that's completely outside of their control. Yeah. And it's not to say that everything well, is under your control either, but it, it, gives you an excuse not to take control of your own life. There's part of the problem I have with the whole black lives matter movement. And this whole deal is they're not really focused on the real problem. So like they're focused on all of these like microaggressions and statues and things like that. Mm -hmm. But there are parts of this country and, and like, I mean, you go to Pritchard or you go to any of these areas Mm -hmm. that, well, they, these people have real problems. Like if you're born and live in those areas, it's hard to get out of those areas. Absolutely. And that's not part of this discussion at all. Well, and there have been, I, like if you listen to Thomas Sowell talk about uh, these yeah. things, um, and I recommend that everybody do, go YouTube yeah. Thomas Sowell. Like the guy's fascinating and funny. Yeah. Can't beat it. <laughs> yeah, right? um, he is. But, uh, you know, he talks about growing up in Harlem in the 50s, yeah. Um, and how, uh, they used to sleep outside on the, um, on the porches and leave their doors unlocked and there wasn't a serious crime problem. And most of the families were together. Um, and he got a really good education at his local public school and, um, and all of that has changed and it's, it's changed with the war on poverty. Yeah. Um, that well, the poverty and- was already decreasing, uh, before the war on poverty, you know, started. And since the war on poverty started, it's maintained a pretty steady rate. And well, and it goes back to one of those things, again, that you can't rely on government because government creates perverse incentives. What, whatever, go- well, anytime government starts throwing its money at a problem, you're in, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's kind of maybe where you're going with this. I don't know. But I mean, it definitely makes sense that once the government starts providing all of these benefits that things get worse. I mean, you look at um, like student loan debt, Mm -hmm. like that's um, as soon as you get the government involved in this practice, it becomes a like out of hand and a problem. Well, there's a a couple of reasons for that. And the part that I wanted to focus on here is the, is the perverse incentives. So the government, the government itself doesn't have any incentive to end whatever it is they're fighting. Yeah. Right. Like the program (laughs) ends if the problem ends. So if you want to maintain the program, you got to maintain the problem. Yeah. Um, so that's part of it. And then on the other side of it, if you look at the, the family structure thing, of course, you know, apparently the nuclear family is a, uh, you know, a white supremacist ideal or something, but, um, (laughs) Is it the, still white supremacist if I think everyone should do it? Like, I mean, if, <laughs> yeah, because it's your culture, I because guess, or I, something. Am I, I don't forcing know. my culture on other people? That's, Is that what I'm doing? That's exactly <laughs> what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. But um, the, uh, you know, and, and I don't think that it was all intentional either. Yeah. Um, so I would hope that the people that started um, providing government support for single mothers yeah. As an example, yeah, um, we're doing it because they really wanted to help out these these few, relatively speaking, At to the now, time, yeah, yeah, um, poor women who uh, had lost their husbands one way or another, yeah, um, or lost their men one way or another. I guess doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be a husband, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and they really wanted to help them out. But what they have done is they've created an incentive. 
to, to, to be a single parent. Exactly. Um, and, and then you wonder why, uh, you know, um, men are out of control or whatever, like this idea of the toxic male. Well, it, could it be that they didn't have a good male role model? Yeah. Because the government has incentivized the, not having that. Yeah, not having the guy around because you can yeah. get more money if there is no um yeah. there is no male role model in the house. Yeah. Um so that that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about, but um you know, back to the I I guess back to the to the root of that discussion. Um you know that the the idea that there's privilege just in being white, I think, can be, you know, demonstrably demonstrably falsified. Yeah. Um, and this is like a really sad note to end this podcast on. Uh, unfortunately, I think this is going to be the last thing. But um, yeah. I pulled up a while back because I was trying to look for some kind of evidence of this, um, and I pulled up suicide rates in the U.S. by by race. Okay. Um, and this is per hundred thousand citizens. Uh, the the group, the ethnic group at the top is uh, the Amero Indian, um, you know, indigenous peoples uh, group. Okay. Uh, 44 and a half suicides per 100,000. Okay. Um, I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, I mean, I guess it's, when you're, it's at the top of the list. I, you know, I guess so. they're number one, yeah. Yeah. Um, the next group was uh, white. Really? 36. Yeah. Um, and then under that you have Hispanic, which was 30, but... But almost half of those identify as white also. They're like white no. people with Hispanic backgrounds. So yeah. if you add those, then the white people is the biggest, like the Become highest the suicide highest, yeah. rate at 50, yeah. roughly, um, per 100,000. Yeah. Um, uh, black and Asian were both at 14. Really? Yep. Hmm. So um, I, I would suggest... That is a, interesting. Yeah, I would suggest a couple of things. That just being white does not make it an easy life for you. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Um, that there is some danger in the the uh, the pressure of high expectations. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that suicide rates can be, you know, oh, some measure of that to some degree. But like the idea that you have it particularly bad because of whatever group you classify yourself into, um, I, I think doesn't do you any good. No, I mean that's that's no way to. to change what's going on yeah like, i mean focus on what you, you can control, control your own yeah you yeah. control your own destiny mm -hmm. and i'm a big believer in that like i mean yeah you, you can <laughs> you can control some of these outcomes you may not can control everything around you but you can control how you respond to it yeah and it will take a certain level of self-reflection and uh, when things don't work mm -hmm. out for you instead yeah. of throwing it off into some factor that was outside of your control yeah. examine the factors that were in what your control you and think do. you might have been able to do differently. Yeah, because at the end of the day, that's all, all, the only thing you can control is yourself. Like, you mm -hmm. can't control the outside factors, but you can control how you respond to them. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the best. If, if you and you can control how you prepare for the next... Yeah, absolutely. The next problem. Absolutely. Um, or the next opportunity, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um. So actually, that real that was a relatively positive way to yeah, end. So we rounded that out. Look at <laughs> <Okay>. us. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, that's that's it for now. I uh, we expect to be back on a regular schedule yeah, Thursday so or Friday. Softball's over, so um, that's no longer a factor. At least for a few weeks, they're already doing sign up sign ups for fall ball. So. Oh, <laughs> um, oh, so this is kind of unrelated. This is just like my own neuroses or whatever. Um, you pointed out to me the review, uh, that we had on iTunes where, um, and the person gave us a five, five stars. So I, this isn't all bad, but I was like kind of taken aback by this line in there where they said something like, um, and, uh, Michael tells, Michael says a couple of things that aren't quite true or something like that, <laughs> um, in every episode. And, uh, like, <laughs> I'm kind of curious about that. So if that person, hopefully that person's still listening because they gave us five stars. Yeah. Um, my email is Michael at the Liberty Mike, and this goes for everybody. Yeah. Uh, first, let me say that um, that I will not lie on yeah. this podcast. I may be yeah. wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, but I'm I'm certainly not. I, I, well, and I I don't know that they intended this, and I doubt that they did. But the use of the word truth. Yeah. Um, makes it sound like that I'm 
intentionally falsifying something. Yeah. And that's certainly not the case. Like I said, I may be wrong, um, but I'm not lying. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, like if you if you have better information than me, I am always open to it. Like yeah. I read constantly. I'm happy to learn things. If you got another perspective that that you don't think I understand, email me, Michael at the Liberty Mike. Yeah. Um, or you can you know post something on Facebook, or you can PM. Uh, Liberty Mike on Facebook, or can you can you PM the page? The yeah, oh absolutely. Okay, so yeah. so absolutely. yeah, you can. Um, it's there. Yeah, you can it's message available. the page. Um, I mean, I, I'm not real good about checking it, but uh, Liberty Larry will tell me if there's something I'm <laughs> there on there. that I need to and respond I, to. I feel like yeah, I check it. I'm on there a fair amount. So if there's <laughs> something that I think Mike needs to get involved with, I can always. I've got his line too. <laughs> yeah. Um. So anyway, I was I was just kind of taken aback by that. I. Uh, you may disagree with my analysis or my interpretation, but I, I feel like I'm pretty solid on the facts that I present yeah. um, on this podcast. Uh, you but do, you do your, you do definitely do your homework before we discuss a subject. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, but if you disagree uh, or if you think you or if you if you have better information than me, I am open to it. So please and I, contact. And at some point in the near future, I want to get to. I need to get on there and kind of figure out how it's done, but I want to set up a private Facebook page. Oh yeah. That listeners. might be important too, because, um, um I, Facebook has, uh, has muted my posts yeah. a couple of times. Well, and um, if we have our own <laughs> private group and that's something that I'd like for the kind of the private group to be is to be able to kind of listeners and people like, and, our friends and people like that can actually go in there and we can have a discussion on some of these things. Yeah, sure. And, and kind of like an, kind of like an open forum where some of these things can be discussed and hammered out, and, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I mean, I, I like these kind of situations cause nobody can argue with me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but it'll give, it gives people that listen to the show kind of a forum to, you mm -hmm. know, say what they think about what we think and things like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, um, provide, uh, new information to us just generally. Um, uh, yeah. we used to have a couple of listeners that with some regularity would send, um, I don't know about you, but at least would yeah. send me articles and, and things like that or oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. topic suggestions, things like that. Um, and I really appreciate that. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we had a one long-term listener just tell us a point blank that they only listened to a few minutes of the last episode because they were so tired of coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. I will say that if you can get past the first few minutes, we mostly talked economics on that podcast, but we did. Um, but it was, but I get it. But like, it's <laughs> economics based around the coronavirus, and I yeah. get being overloaded with that because it's, yeah. I'm oh, tired of it too. We all are. Like, <laughs> and so. you know, now we have a mask requirement here. Oh man. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I don't want to talk about is mask. Like that's something I have heard everybody on this planet's opinion on, mm -hmm. and I'm just over it. Yep, yep. So we won't do it now. We're just gonna close things out. So absolutely, um, we'll be back. We, we plan to be back in a week. This is one of the things that they might have thought that I was saying was not quite true. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> like when I say when the next podcast will be. Yeah. Um, or that's um, always a shot in the dark. When Who I knows? say next time we'll get it right because you know um, <laughs> we're still working on that one too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, we intend to be back here in about a week. Um, in the meantime. Um, you know, follow us on Facebook and uh, subscribe on iTunes and Podbean. Um, like and share. That really helps. Uh, oh, it does. We appreciate the reviews, even the ones that say I'm a liar. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we plan to be back in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later. Mm -hmm.